Well, hey there, guys. Yeah, like I was saying earlier this morning, this really is America. We've got people from both sides, uh, pro and against, and they're both here sharing ideas, and at times it is you know, a little chirpy here. And when you look at the radar, you'll see that, of course, the storm is mostly in the Northeast. So it makes sense why places like Boston and New York are impacted. But if you look at the departure board, you'll see flights that are going to Orlando, even Phoenix that are canceled. That means there's a lot of upset passengers all over the country. Hey there guys, this is Evan Kozloff. I'm here at Jacksonville Beach. I just want to show you some of the damage that we have right now. Mother Nature is just showing off right now. Look at this water right now. Look at how much white foam there is. And actually, if we could get it, look at it rush over the dune into the swimming pool on the bottom floor of our condo. It's rushing into that. In fact, you probably can't even see the swimming pool anymore because it's just that whole area is inundated. Right here, we set up the, the GoPro here on this and we looked out at the waves. Uh, why don't we roll some of that video? You can see it right there. Um, yes, these waves are ferocious. Yes, they're angry, but uh, they're actually pretty beautiful as well. Plus, photojournalist Dan Petrilli and I are getting in the hockey spirit as we get ready for some postseason action. Let's see how we do. Hey, there you go. Plus, we got some yoga. Stay with us. Yeah, hey there, guys. Uh, the photojournalist I'm working with is a big hockey fan. So he convinced me to put on the skates. Terrible idea, because I'm probably going to fall on my face. But if I don't, I could tell you about a few promotions that they're working on. I just heard him use the word nasty, and that was an accurate way to describe it, uh, as the sleet is coming through. And you could probably hear it a little bit, right, that wind. Uh, it's not comfortable to be out here. I want to talk a little bit about the consistency of this. This is what snow days are all about. We're joined by, <laughs> there it is. We're joined by Emily, Ethan, and Yana. And they're 9, 13, and uh, let's, Emily, we'll start with you. What, what's the snow day all about for you? Well, I'm happy that we don't have school. Okay, so yeah, I look pretty ridiculous right now, but by wearing this, I'm able to get a great view of this possible house design. In fact, just look at this video. It's all as if these countertops are right here in front of me. Almost. And what I'm doing right now is just to mirror exactly mm -hmm. how this all works. You can see it's one on the left, one on the right. Then when you put it in here, your eyes sort of do all the work. So now I can hand it they over can to, readjust to it. Makia, yeah. and now she's seeing it in 3D. Yeah, you feel like you're there, like you can touch the countertop. Oh, well, hey there, guys. A little hard to hear, of course, because there's so much energy here. People are excited. Just look around at how many people are already here in line. Mind you how early we are. We still got about an hour to go, but people are having fun. They're here. Look at that. Look over here to the left here, you got the Clydesdales that are out. Right now, why don't we show you the outside here. Um, we're going through a more residential area just to show you what it looks like. Uh, pretty quiet right now, although the roads are getting a little wet as is expected. It all started six and a half miles down that way. This is the northbound lane. So by Montgomery Village Avenue, they saw the suspected stolen car and so a chase ensued. Six and a half miles all the way up to around here where the suspects bailed from the car. So, of course, after they bailed, the helicopter came here, police cruisers responded to the scene, and they were searching the whole area, trying to find the suspects. Oh, Evan, do you have any company there? What are you doing? You're sitting in a massage chair, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Life could really be worse, guys. This is uh, pretty nice. I think it's probably the most unique live shot I've ever done. We are, of course, in Brookstone, because where else do you start your shopping but Brookstone? You take a look at some of the items they have, and. It might be hard for me to continue with this live shot and get up, but uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to get up. I'm <laughs> from the Boston area, as you guys know, so snow is like a way of life for us. Uh, I've got quite a few snow hacks, but I'm learning today. You know, Americans are pretty innovative. There's some things I've never heard of, which we're going to explore today. It's going to be a conversation. We're going to try them out. You can let me know whether they worked or not. I'll be trying them. You know, I guess this is sort of the place to be. It is very busy right now. Literally thousands of people are here. You can see many women with their fluffy pink hats on top and as well as the signs. And they're from all over this region. All of them have a message for those in power. Many of these young people might just be frustrated entrepreneurs who are making the best out of a bad situation. So the plan is to harness that passion and that ambition and train them to start their own businesses before they ever turn to crime. Well, this right here is the Starship Delivery Robot. It's kind of like a mix between a delivery boy and R2-D2. And right now, we're at 14th Street by Ted's Bulletin, where we've got three cameras all over this thing to show you the entire delivery from beginning to end. Good morning. Just try to make it to school. Good morning without hearing from the face of Falls Church. Hi. 
Thank you very much. Just as sure as the sun rises, Janet Haynes will be there at the corner of Broad and Spring. You coming across? The 92-year-old has now been there for 50 years. I'm always amazed whether it's raining, it's freezing, or snow, she's still here. Pastor Patrick Posey says she has become a town icon. But if she misses because of a sick day, the uh, school office is being inundated with phone calls. What happened? Where is she? Is she okay? That's how integral she is with our community. And so now that community is giving back. At a vocal assembly, the kids let her hear just how much they care. She's very helpful for the school, and I think that we should um, give grace to her. I like how she helps us cross the road. She is just really good. As for Haynes? This is overwhelming. <laughs> I didn't expect it, but I'm enjoying it. As she should, but not for too long, because come this morning, you can expect their hero in yellow to be back in the corner. In Falls Church, Evan Kozloff, WUSA 9. Matza. This is the Matza Man, dressed in a full body, you guessed it, Matza suit. Because Matza Man is super excited for Passover night. And it's not just his suit. This is my Matza mobile. This guy okay. clearly is crazy about Matza. I get smiles, people are honking. Everybody loves Matza Man. Everybody loves a Matza mobile. His real name is Shmuel Herzfeld. He's the rabbi for Ohev Shalom in the Shepherd Park area of Northwest. He does this every year to get people excited for the holiday. This is my matzah chef's hat. Inside the synagogue, he shows us where they've been baking all weekend to prepare for the holiday. We take our baker's tools, we stick it in the oven, we take out the matzah when it's piping hot and fresh. And the end result is this, flat, crispy, unleavened matzah. I love the holiday so much. I love Passover, I love the matzah, and I want to share my joy with the world. You don't have to be Jewish to eat matzah. Everybody loves matzah. Beautiful matzahs. And so with the holiday just hours away, remember, if you need matzah, you call the matzah man. In Northwest, Evan Kozloff, WUSA 9. But there's not a part of the job that I don't like. 24-year-old Taylor Pete has wanted to be a police officer for years. He graduated from the academy just two months ago. Now he's training at the Bowie Police Department. It's just a rewarding job. I mean, you know, each day is different. It's not boring. There's always something to do. But while Pete puts the uniform on, many young people are turning away from law enforcement. This is a, a national trend that we're seeing all, all throughout the law enforcement profession. Chief John Nesky says in the past they could expect 200 to 300 applicants in a class. No. This year, they got less than 100. It's a drastic drop, and it's something that we're seeing within different agencies when we talk to other people. But the question is why? You do! Nesky says a growing hostility toward police is one factor, this follows highly covered police-involved shootings across the country. Another factor is increasing danger after officers have been targeted in places like Dallas, Baton Rouge, and New York City. We take some of the, the isolated incidents uh, and it gets brushed over with the gigantic paintbrush over all of law enforcement, not just what happened in one specific area or one specific incident. It kind of tarnishes the entire profession. As for new recruit Anthony Imperial, He's optimistic. It's always darkest before the dawn, so we're at our dark times now, and I know that we're going to get a lot better with the community and the relations, and I, I believe more people will apply. I think they will.